our top story, the secrets of Islamic State and its members revealed. I think this is the biggest security breach for a terror organization in history. Tonight, the details of what one intelligence expert told us could be the biggest breakthrough in years. You've got to realize what you're exposing. What you're exposing is pure evil. A source from inside the network tells us the documents could bring Islamic State to its knees. It's never happened before, and I'm pretty certain after this it'll never happen again. The first indication that we had something different was from our producer, Mahmoud, who said, we're being told there's paperwork that identifies Islamic State fighters, but particularly foreigners. It was when I received a message from someone here in Turkey. He's Syrian. He has uh, relations with people inside uh, IS in Raqqa. They sent him thousands of files. I remember Mahmoud saying to me, Stuart, it'd be very difficult for people to make this up because there's just huge amounts of these files. There are thousands and thousands. So I said, let's sort of go and have a look. We are working out of a city called Urfa, which is a Turkish city with a huge Arab population. If the Islamic State members were able to escape from Syria, they were actually often visiting family or friends in Urfa. It felt eerie, and I knew at that point it was quite a dangerous place to be because that's where a lot of fighters were going in and out of Syria. You know, we stick out like a sore thumb in eastern Turkey. There aren't really many foreigners who arrive. The Secret Service of Turkey, which is huge, would know exactly where we were. We spent huge amounts of time walking through markets, looking at dates and peppers and garlic and all the rest of it. We pretty much got rid of the potential of being watched. And then it was literally a case of waiting for them to say, right, now's the time to come. So you go through those areas and then find yourself in the upper story of a four or five floor apartment block. We're going to meet a defector from Islamic State who apparently is going to hand over files that might be the key to breaking Islamic State. It was always extremely tense. He's a dangerous guy, it's a dangerous location, and we don't know if it's going to work. When you look back, it seems fairly relaxed. Everyone's sitting down and we're all going on fine. But actually, you know, we had to put our security guys outside on the street. If anything changed very quickly, we would have to be prepared to move very fast. There was a concern. We didn't know who we were meeting. You've come from Raqqa. Why have you come to Turkey? And then we talked a lot about the importance of the documents. Is this information so important that it could actually destroy Daesh? Inshallah. I thought we'd be getting some files. I did not expect to get every single ISIS recruit. I mean, it was just quite simply a USB stick, just like you'd find in a WH Smith anywhere. The information on this could bring down the entire network, not just in Iraq and Syria, but across the world. Put it into the Mac and opened up my Finder window, and no joke, Arabic name, Arabic name, Arabic name. Wherever they came from, if they joined up, it's on here. Adam turns me, he goes, there's just, there's just thousands of, thousands and thousands of files here. Well, it was, it was me and Stuart's mouth just went to the ground because it was, if, if you were there, you'd just take one look at it and you'd know it was, it was real, it was what it said. Any jihadist who came to Syria from the beginning of Islamic State, he had to give full information about himself, his passport, his phone number, everything. It named people who were effectively members of a prescribed organization who could potentially be planning terror attacks in the UK or, or elsewhere in the world. But it also gave information about them, named their mothers and gave skills. 
their names, their nationalities, their phone numbers, the sponsors. It would be like the HR files of any organization, and to have that um, kind of information is just, I would say, unprecedented. I was astonished. I didn't expect that. I said to Mahmoud, I need something, an idea of whether it's true or not. Just scroll down till you find a British name and tell me who it is. So he started reading, he said, this guy is from Tunisia, or this guy is from Morocco, and this guy's from Uzbekistan. Ah, this the British guy. And I said, uh, who is it? And he said, oh, it's a guy called Junaid Hussain. <laughs> and I said, you're kidding me. He said, why, Stuart? I don't know this guy. And I said, yeah, he's, he's quite famous. Junaid Hussain was the head of the social media arm of Islamic State, which became this huge, brilliantly well-organized um, propaganda section. So once we'd done all that and matched it all up, we just thought, we're onto a winner here. There's no way, there's no way in a million years this isn't genuine. There has never been a leak from an active terror organization on a scale even remotely like this. An unprecedented cache of information that could destroy Islamic State's fighting infrastructure. But also I was worried, was it too good to be true? Calling somebody a terrorist is about the most defamatory allegation you can make. Even if you're confident that something is genuine and you're confident that these documents really are effectively the HR files for ISIS, then we have to be able to prove it. Because it's no good, they can be real. Um, but if we can't prove it, somebody named in them could still potentially sue us. We were worried that we could be naming people that had nothing to do with it. I mean, so much so that you could close the company if you were that wrong. When a media organization makes a, a big mistake, that's the thing that makes a noise. That's the thing that people remember. I've got to work till I'm dead and meet my grave. A lot of the names are well known to us. Abdel Barry, a 26-year-old from London, entered in 2013. The way we did it, and this was Matt McKenzie who made us do it, was to actually say, we can identify the known jihadists. That is the only way around it. We can do the known ones, and by and large, they're dead. We only identified known associates of ISIS, people that were known to have trained with ISIS, and actually who were reported to have been killed. Because ultimately that couldn't possibly be confused with somebody else. And Riyad Khan from Cardiff, who also entered in 2013. So it was a sort of disappointing way to break the story with a load of names everyone knew. But what it did was pretty much tell everyone the world. But we know an awful lot more. Our top story, the secrets of Islamic State and its members revealed. Then it went absolutely crazy. The documents could bring Islamic State to its knees. There's 50 plus news organizations, each were ringing me within minutes of our, our first piece going to air. And I remember um, one of the first analysts came on and said the files are fake. And my heart absolutely sunk. And they said the typeface that they're using was different and the flag was different on the paperwork. And I, I remember sort of like reading that and sort of, I think I lay, I sort of sat on the floor and thought, well, that's it then, I'm finished. We had no reason to think they were anything other than genuine, but even then, when somebody says, well, hold on, they're not real because of A, B and C, there's a doubt. Yeah, I felt physically sick. I went from having the best scoop to the biggest embarrassment there's ever been. My reputation would be gone forever. I remember as I was picking up the phone, I could hardly stop my hand shaking. I was just shaking, shaking, saying, I've got to make this call. And I have to make this call to the only person who can possibly, I can trust on this because I can't, I don't know anyone else who can help me with this. And that was Mahmoud. And he said, um, Stuart, they changed the flag and the typeface, they changed. It's true, it's real. These files are simply the best intelligence that's ever existed about Islamic State. 
our analysis of the files reveal that jihadists have made their way to Syria from at least 51 nations across the globe. Well, some breaking news for you just in that Denmark has arrested four suspects. Guns and ammunition have been found by police in Denmark following the arrest of four suspected Islamic State terrorists. Arrests were made uh, across uh, Europe really, really quickly. Very soon, same thing was happening in the UK. They could arrest people and hold them for suspicion of being members of Islamic State. Mohammed Abdullah became the first person to be convicted for his involvement in being a member of the Islamic State. He came from Manchester. He was part of a Manchester cell. There is a direct link to the Manchester bombings. He was on the forms. He had listed uh, himself as wanting to be a sniper for Islamic State. He had clearly been trained. That was very much a test case. Um, to determine whether or not um, the IS files actually had evidential value. What was interesting about the Crown Prosecution Service's position on this was that they wanted to secure a conviction based on membership of the files. Signing up to the files means you were, you were a member of a prescribed organisation which is a terrorist group and you will go to prison. This information helped to know IS from inside. I think they helped to collapse this organization, to know their commanders, the sponsors, this network in Syria and in the other countries. You know, the exposure that, that, that it got when we got back here and actually what came out of it, you know, what people getting arrested. You've got to realize what you're exposing. What you're exposing is pure evil. It was more important than just being the first to break this story. It's part of the DNA of being a journalist, of course, but it was actually, we have to do justice to these files as best we can because they are actually important. And the names on here are people who have carried out, are carrying out attacks, or are about to carry out attacks. Anyone on those files will go to prison if they're caught.